embracing and with what, how I perceive it um, and how it works for me um, when with clients and personally. Um, and then I'll talk about how we can actually use crystals throughout your day um, and how you can use them to help you um, balance out your own energies. Okay. So um, I've been practicing Reiki for about three years now. Um, I do non-contact Reiki. Um, so I work mainly in your auric field rather than um, hand placements on your body. Um, I find this is more effective for me um, and it's also um, allows me to sense your energy changes easier rather than on your physical body. Um, with Reiki what I'm doing is I'm channeling energy from um, the universal um, source energy as well as um, your guides and um, any of my Reiki guides as well. Um, so generally with that, um, I have to be quite clear and balanced in order for that to um, occur, uh, what you say, um, to occur clearly. Um, I won't take, as a rule, I won't take a client on unless um, I'm feeling that my energy centers are clear um, because I don't want to transfer anything uh, over. Even though Reiki can do no harm as an energy force, that's my personal belief is that I should be clear if I'm going to then try and um, help someone else shift their energy. <coughs> um, so yeah, it's basically um, the energy work is done over your um, chakra centers as well as different points along your body. Um, you have chakras all over your body. Your main ones that you would have heard about are your main seven, which are down pretty much down the breadth of your spine. So you have your crown, your third eye, your throat chakra, heart chakra, solar plexus, and then you have your sacral and your root chakra. Um, you also have the main ones that I work with are your um, earth star chakra, which is what actually grounds you into the center of the earth. So when people talk about grounding, you're actually activ activating your root chakra and your earth star chakra, which is more of a black color. Um, and you've also got your soul star, which is your next one up from your crown. So your crown sits on the top of your head, approximately. Um, your soul star is then up here. And that one there allows you to get information from source. So um, channelers and stuff like that generally use their crown to soul chakras. Um, then when you're doing inter interdimensional channel, uh, channeling, uh, so when you have people that channel for a whole room, um, you're mainly working with those soul, uh, that soul star chakra because you're actually um, stepping back from your physical body and using the energies that are coming through. Um, much the same as what you do with Reiki. Um, I also took part in a course here which is multi-dimensional multi um, frequency, frequency technique. Um, that energy work there is done um, without actually having any contact or you're just being in the space with your client. Um, what you do then is you're working, you're expanding the actual zero point space or your heart center space out from yourself and around the entire room. And then your client being in that zero space has the ability to shift whatever they need to instantly. Okay, it is possible for you to have instant releases I was in a set when we were um, learning, I had a instant release through the base of my feet. I wasn't quite grounded enough and it felt like someone had just turned a fan on on my feet and it was just an instant gushing of energy straight out through the bottom of my feet. Um, that's how instant it can happen. You have people that can have an emotional release halfway through the session and it's a big full on session, a uh, big full on release. Um, not everyone's ready for that, so it's not something that, unless it resonates with you, so if you see an ad on Facebook or you know someone says they're advertising, unless it clicks in your mind where you're like, actually, I want to give that a shot, you're not really ready for it. And I would be trying something like um, Reiki, which is more gentle, right? So it won't um, won't make you look at it straight in the face, if if, um, if that makes sense. Um, any questions on that before I start moving into crystals? No? Okay. 
Um, so I work with crystals um, during some of my sessions, but not all of them. Um, but these ones here, I give you a few tips on stuff that you can, uh, what you can use personally. So selenite one, pass that around just so everyone can kind of see them. This is a um, the mineral form of this is actually gypsum, um, which is something you put on your garden, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. um, this is just the crystalline form of it. This has got a quite high and very um, bright white um, energy when you meditate with it. It's good for contacting your angel and spirit guides. It helps you um, center and align all of your chakras. Good for, clean, um, for clearing your um, aura as well. So you can use it much like you would if you were going to smudge yourself. You can actually use selenite to do that instead of having um, instead of using white sage or palo santo. So it's pretty much like that. And you can feel it in your auric field moving um, the energy away. So you can do that as a full cleanse. Good for setting up grids. So if you want to amplify something, um, so if you want to do a Reiki distant healing, something like that, excellent one to have in the room um, and have either on top of the name or the photo. Um, that will just amplify and shoot out um, the energies that you're sending through. Um, also a good one if you have um, spinal issues. I personally use this, so I'm not just making this up as I go along. I have used it on my spine. I have lower back um, pain quite a lot um, from my um, full-time job as a landscaper. So this here, um, this here, before I go to bed, meditate with it, just sitting on my spine. And what that does is it helps align your um, spinal structure of stretching it out All right. and yeah so and I found that's made a huge improvement and pretty much overnight I can have um, I can be free of back pain so I do find that it works um, another use one for grounding so there's a couple of black tourmaline Also, these ones are good for um, grid work too because they're quite small. So any of your tumble stones using grid work, um, they're easy to carry around, easy to put in your pocket um, or wear. You can get um, the necklaces that have got, um, I actually forgot to put mine on today. Um, but the material ones that are like your cages and stuff like that to wear, and you can wear them with you. The black tourmaline itself um, is really good for uh, grounding any negative um, energy that is resonating um, is resonating around you. Um, it's also good for electromagnetic, electromagnetic energies that come off your computer and stuff like that. So to create a shield from yourself and your computer screen, popping one of those next to your screen or blue packet on the back, you be amazed at the difference it makes. What it does is it kind of it creates like a force field between your aura and the energies coming off the screen. Also a good one to put in doorways. So if you've cleansed your house um, and you're going to have a whole lot of people come around, good one to have just do a row of them, either blue tack them across the door frame or put a couple either side of the door. And when people walk in, it make, uh, it, that shield doesn't let people bring their energies, if they're negative energies, into your house. So your house will end up feeling, so it's good, um, feeling good and um, expansive. So it actually, it'll keep um, yeah, anything bad outside your front door. I'll come back to that. Um, another couple ones that I've got at the moment, um, green tourmaline. Actual flecks of green. These are grown on a. These are grown in a matrix. So the matrix itself is just a quartz um, based crystal. Um, the green tourmaline is 
that resonates really highly with your heart chakra. The green has a very uh, has a masculine energy to it, um, or yang. So if you're everything is yin and yang, basically um, a lot with uh, energy. It's how people resonate with it. So the green good for um, earth earth connection and letting you it gives you the happiness and joy um, from a heart chakra stone. Um, but it also allows you to deal with any emotional problems, so it will help you bring them up and face them. Um, it's also a great pairing with the pink tourmaline, which I'll go through afterwards, which is the feminine energy. Both of them working together um, will allow your heart chakra to open fully so that you can accept and receive love on all levels. Um, great one to have if you're feeling uh, lonely and stuff like that as well. Um, it will just help you feel more secure and stable um, in your own company. uplifting um, everything you associate um, with feminine energy um, so it doesn't bog you down and it connects with your higher chakras as well whereas your masculine energy will connect with your lower chakras so the pink ones um, <coughs> all about divine love and acceptance um, and bringing in um, your divine love energies through your um, higher chakras so it resonates with yeah, your heart definitely and also with your um, third eye and crown it links with them Notice that it's um, very circular in its formation. Um, jaspers as a stone group have got, I might pass them all around actually, so that people can take their time with them. So jaspers as a group have got so many different variations um, in the way that they form. For example, you've got Bukite, which is also a jasper. You also have this type of jasper, which is a sicurated, I'm pretty sure. But I haven't actually worked with that one. And pitchy jasper. So I'll just walk these around. So these are Bukite, pitchy jasper, and then that's a sicurated jasper. So they're the different formations. And then you also have the circular of the ocean jasper. Yeah. So yeah, all the same family, same um, crystalline structure, but the formations of them vary widely and they all come from different areas. Ocean Jasper is mainly, well, it's getting mined out at the moment, but it's generally found um, in Madagascar. So I'm sure that there's a mine in Madagascar where pretty much all of the motion jasper comes from. Um, so yeah, um, motion jasper is a great one for emotional healing. It's quite gentle and calming when you use it, much like ocean waves crashing on a beach. So if you kind of have that, if you can picture that in your mind, a nice gentle day with the ocean splashing on the waves, that's the kind of energy that you're getting from an ocean jasper. It works well on a cellular level for um, healing, that's healing the physical body. Um, I actually had a cut on my finger, which I used it every day, had a piece, um, and just sat it on there for half an hour every day. And it was a deep cut, mind you, but I ne never needed stitches. It healed itself up, um, and it would have happened over about two weeks as opposed to what it was. 
about four to six. Um, they had big fat cutlogs on the perks of working outside. <laughs> um, a good one for connecting with Earth energies as well. Compared to the black tourmaline, it's more of a honey brown kind of a colour. That is very good for if you want to do some earth energy works, um, use in a meditation, it'll help you connect with the earth centre or the earth heart. <coughs> um, also good for shifting um, any negative emotions you might have attached to uh, a particular person. Um, good to wear and keep on your person as well. It's a newer one that's been found recently, so I haven't worked with it mm -hmm. as much as what I would have liked to, but it's um, mm -hmm. one that when I have meditated with it, it is, um, yeah, there's a very potent energy with it. It's very good for mm -hmm. Um is pretty much one of my favourite crystals. Um, I use it all the time when I'm doing uh, Reiki healings or um, energy work of any kind. It keeps me quite grounded and I, that's what I mainly use it for is grounding. Um, but without giving you that bogged down feeling. So it still lets you do um, channel in higher energies um, than what your physical body is resonating at. But it doesn't leave you feeling stuck the bottom. Um, <coughs> um, it's really good for use with, um, again, electromagnetic fields. It's a good one, especially when you get it in um, to quartz points, um, which, I mean, you can get, I've seen caves of it as well, not just the tunnel stones. Um, that'd be one of my missions would to be to get to one of those, but unfortunately I don't have the money and I can't go hunting for them. <laughs> um, <coughs> smoky quartz is good for um, allowing yourself to just be you um, without letting you, um, without pushing people away. So it allows you to explore yourself and be who you're meant to be. <coughs> One I didn't speak about um, before is peach selenite. So that actually is um, got more of an iron content than the other um, selenite. Resonating with your uh, sacral chakra. It allows um, your energy to um, flow down and help you ground in that higher energy. So if you do need to, <coughs> if you're doing a lot of channeling or if you're doing a lot of group work, it's a good one to um, help ground and flush out um, excess energies that are sitting in your field. work with um, if you want to activate your third eye chakra um, so if you if you kind of already get um, a little bit of intuition going on um, and that sort of stuff that is a good one to start working with what it does is it expands your third eye like that mm. all right it is a big massive open 
um, it allows you to notice your personal magic and what makes you special right? and what your gifts are that you carry around that are deep inside of you. Thirst out here. <laughs> no, it's alright. I've got a, I've got a drink there. It's fine. Thank you. <laughs> Just that. Because you're talking about. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Did the wrong side of the tea drop? No, that's alright. Uh, the colour or the fluorescence inside Labradorite is unique to that stone. Mm. Um, you do get slight ones that have got like a shimmer. Um, you can get a gold sheen obsidian, which has um, kind of looks like a silver flash through it when the light hits it right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but Labradorite, <laughs> yeah, it's very unique to what it is. Or if you want to uh, reflect um, on your own personal stuff. Yeah, good for if you need to look at your personality traits as well. Um, if you're having issues with um, someone at work or someone that you, you've met in a group just not connecting with them, you don't really understand why, it's a good one to look at and see if there's something maybe that you are doing wrong, or a personality trait that you have that might be coming up, and the reason that you're not liking them is because they're showing you what it is. So this will help you then see what the mirror is. chuck it in your water because mm. <laughs> um, it is yeah it's lithium based it's got a very calming um, grounding energy to it um, a lot of people like to put tumble stones in water which is cool it makes kind of a, like an elixir that one I wouldn't recommend doing it with it's better if you're carrying it around with you activates your uh, crown chakra um, people that have used it find that it's good for dream work. So if you want to go astro travel in your dream, let the light one do it. If you're having trouble sleeping, it'll help bring a calming energy. So it'll help you rest easier. If you put it under the, uh, in your pillowcase, under your pillow, you'll find it's really good for that. Um, my mum actually uses that specifically for helping her sleep. Um, and she finds it very, very effective. Um, also good if you've um, got um, turbulence within your family, so if you've got siblings or your husband and your son are uh, hating each other at the moment, it's a good one to stick in under the coffee table in the lounge room or the flu tacket under the dining room table and it will just help diffuse the situation so they won't be so full on at each other. All right? um, Yeah, if, you've got, if you've got conflict in a room, mm. yeah, it'll help just mellow it out. Um, it won't solve the problem by any stretch of the imagination, yeah, like yeah, they yeah. still have to work <laughs> through that, um, but it will help mellow it out, yes. Mm. Malachite. <laughs> 
This one is a copper oxide based mineral. Again, toxic if ingested, but fine in a tumble stone form if you do touch carry where it's perfectly fine and safe. Um, the raw um, stuff of that, if you ever get the chance to grab a piece of raw malachite, the forms on it are amazing. The way it grows and the structures and what it, the crystals that it grows with, because it's been found with two or three different crystals, um, and it grows kind of like a, it's like a green, a green shimmer. So it kind of looks like a little bit like, um, or a little bit like your labradorite, but um, more of a, an exposed kind of look when, it, um, when the light hits it. It's really quite something. Where does it come from? Oh, that's testing me. Um, <laughs> it's from, it grows all around the world, um, but main, there's main mines in America um, that, that that stuff comes from. Um, and where is the other one? I want to say Brazil, but I'm pretty sure it's not Brazil. Um, Uruguay. Um, there's a mine there. That so it's malachite, isn't it? Yeah, that one, yeah. yeah. So good for work with, if you've got any deep emotional um, baggage from past lives, say, I don't really want to use the word baggage, but you know, that's what we're going to go with now. <laughs> um, that has a good way of, that will shift it um, quite rapidly and help you face what that problem is. Might not be something that you realise you have in your waking life, but it will. It'll bring it up for you to then deal with it and then transmute. Good one for also activating your third eye chakra um, by opening up and expanding it, helping your intuition start developing, um, and also communicating with um, earth earthbound spirits, so forest guides, that sort of stuff. Um, also a good one to meditate with if you want to meditate in a forest area. Mm -hmm. Really good earth connection in a forest just because of the amount of um, green and that, that kind of a green energy. Uh, Lapis lazuli, the blue is lapis, or a, or, the, or a crystal structure known as lapis. And then you also get the white through it, which is calcite. And pyrite, which is the gold speck or fool's gold. Um, those three combined together was very revered in Egypt, um, in ancient Egyptian times. It was worn by um, royalty and still is today seen as a very stone, even though we've now got it free and readily available. Great for um, activating your third eye chakra, but it will also activate your solar plexus chakra. So it actually makes those two work together, which is good. Your solar plexus is classed as um, a lower chakra, um, so it helps bring divine energy through. Great for um, again, um, your clear senses um, and enhancing those ones. Um, or you can you can also buy it in pendants and rings and stuff like that. It is um, very much it's a very showy um, crystal. Um, the mines it comes from, I can't quite remember. Uh, we will have an answer for you, but yeah, I'll have to look that up. Um, but yeah, that's quite a popular one, especially if you're first starting out with kind of um, crystal work and looking at doing your clear se um, senses. That's a good one to start with. Doing your what, sorry? Your clear senses. 
So that's um, clear sensors. So you've got um, you're seeing uh, clairvoyance, that sort of stuff. Um, so you're seeing, hearing, um, feeling. And um, yep, about time to wrap up. Um, so has anyone got any questions or anything?